is off more than 30% compared to the same time last year. Mortgage applications fell almost 10% last week. And for good measure, a Harvard study found that the credit crunch, combined with unusually high foreclosures, have left the country in the worst housing downturn since World War II. Well, is this as bad as it gets? We turn to Greg Hunter for the answers on that. Greg, what do you think? Well, we had the biggest housing boom in history globally, bar none. And what some people are saying, we're going to have the biggest bust, so not even close. Now, according to Yale economics professor Robert Schiller, the typical housing downturn lasts 8 to 10 years. Last October, I asked Schiller if the housing crisis is a nine-inning baseball game, what inning are we in? His answer, just like that. First, so where are we now? Top of the second, maybe? Think of each inning as a year, and according to Schiller, we have a long way to go. We could end up in extra innings. Now, the latest case Schiller report showed home prices hit declines with record declines with a 15% drop in one year. Now, take a good look at this chart. Don't be intimidated by all the colors. It's actually quite simple. We're going to look at it in broad terms. You're looking at the future of all sorts of adjustable rate mortgages. Why does that matter? These are mortgages that are due to reset, which results in higher mortgage payments for millions of Americans. Take a look at the left side of the, of the chart. Those are mostly subprime mortgages you've been hearing about. Now, they are all resetting with higher payments in mass into next year and beyond. Now, look at the rest of the mortgages that are resetting. We're talking Alt A, uh, we're talking a Prime, we're talking a payment option arms. These are not but, necessarily subprime. These are for people who have good credit in many cases. That's right. They're resetting all the way, all the way through 2011 with higher payments. Some call this a mortgage reset tsunami. And if you look on the right side of that chart, and this is scary. The drop-off in resets doesn't really happen until 2012. Now, with declining home prices hitting records, good luck on refinancing. Right now, millions of people owe more on their homes than what they can sell them for. We have seen more than a million foreclosures so far, with some predictions of two million more foreclosures to come in the not-so-distant future. So, are we at the bottom? Poor Alley, I wouldn't be catching that falling knife. You know, the other week when you were on after that, there were some blogs that were saying that uh, you're too grim and I don't, uh, I don't do enough to cheer things up around. Hey, hey, you may not like what I have to say, but I'll never lie to you. I believe that to be true. Uh, let's bring in a panel to uh, continue this discussion. Maybe they'll make me look less like a prophet of doom. Brad Inman is the publisher of Inman News, an independent source for real estate news. And Nicholas Retzinas is the director of Harvard University's Joint Center for Housing Studies. Two guests we have had on before very much. Uh, they know a great deal about this. Uh, gents, you both heard what Greg Hunter has to say. Uh, he, he, he thinks the combination of, uh, of these resetting higher mortgages uh, and, and the situation that we're in with the housing uh, prices suggests that we are not going going anywhere fast in terms of recovery. Uh, let's start with you, Brad. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we're in a mess, and it's hard to see a bottom right now. The only thing I would say, we got some news yesterday about the decline in home prices in California, falling almost 30% in one year. So unlike prior downturns, it's usually like an ocean liner that comes to port very slowly. This is like a jumbo jet that's come down very quickly. So the price acceleration declines are so fast that we've seen this 30 or 40% decline which means we're reaching a more affordable level for the three or four million home buyers that are out there. Who've been That's holding not on good because they, they think that, you know, I don't want to buy into a falling market or I don't want to catch a falling knife. You're thinking that people might just move in because the home is a good value? Well, there, there is opportunity. The challenge for home buyers right now is how much further will it fall? You buy today and if it falls another 20 percent, you feel like you got a bad deal. But the intensity of the decline means that we're reaching affordability for incomes, which is one reason mm -hmm. we got into this mess. and we. We used extreme mortgages to make up the affordability gap, which is what really, really caused the problems Nick, we're facing today. Nick, what do you think? Nick Ratzinas, do you agree with that, that view? Well, there's certainly more reasons to be pessimistic than optimistic. As a report we issued earlier this week said, this is uncharted territory. We have had similar times of fall-offs and starts and sales, but not with the kind of national price declines. Brad's right. We are starting to reach levels of affordability, but now we're running into a wall called willingness to pay. People might think it's affordable, but they're very nervous about buying because they're afraid it's going to be worse tomorrow than it is today. And on top of that, one thing that I've been harping about here on the show is that, you know, this home equity line of credit that's north of $600 billion, that's really not home equity. That's debt on top of debt. And when you add that to the housing industry along with all those resets, and I just don't see how we get out of that. Here's the good news. The good news is for young people, Young people out there are going to get a shot at getting a nice, affordable house at, a, at maybe a high interest rate. 
but they'll pay a lot less than what they're paying now in the, in the future. The question is, where's the bottom in? Unless you're Barbara Corcoran or Donald Trump, I wouldn't be trying to hold on to that, trying to catch that knife. But that bottom is somewhere. The bottom is somewhere, and, and we've never really been good at guessing that. Uh, Nick, your argument is that uh, you don't know how long we'll scrape along that bottom, but between people getting into the market who couldn't afford houses before and an aging population, there's going to be demand for homes. Yeah, I think it'll, it'll vary. This is an awfully big country, so it's hard to make it's hard to make guesstimates that apply to the whole country. For example, here in the Northeast, they didn't have the overbuilding that they had in the Southwest. So whenever we reach the bottom and troll along that bottom, it'll probably be before the the Southwest. You look at the Midwest, that's got some structural economic problems. So until we figure out what that economy is going to be, that's going to be a really long road to recovery. Ultimately, we continue to be a growing population. Ultimately, we form more households, and they need a place to live. So if we can get through this, there will be recovery, but it's going to be a while. You know, uh, Brad, I had uh, Jeff Rubin uh, from CIBC. Uh, he's the chief economist over there at CIBC World Markets earlier on, and he said uh, he continues to think these gas prices will remain high and go higher, and he said that is really going to hit that area of housing that has been most affordable now, those places with the longest commutes. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the exurbs way out of the cities, uh, the far-flung locations is where we've seen the biggest decline in prices. They also represent the longest commutes. People were willing to make those long commutes previously to find affordable housing. So they're going to get hit doubly hard now because not only do you have a decline in prices, increase in foreclosures, lots of listings, but now the commutes are very, very expensive. So the, the urban areas actually are, are benefiting the most from all of this. The, the price declines are less. You know, the issue of gas prices aren't as great. Uh, and there's a lot of affordable, you know, inner city urban condominiums that are on the market right now. But out in the suburbs, the suburbs are getting hit the hardest, particularly those ex-urban areas in the far-flung locations that have long commutes. Well, you don't want to jump into a housing market, too, and end up buying into America's next ghetto. I mean, uh, if you buy into a subdivision that's way out like you're talking about, and all of a sudden the house down the street ends up, you know, broken windows and people at night, you know, uh, you know, firing up crack pipes, hey, you got a problem. So yeah, that's going to be one a real problem. It's one reason one of the initiatives by the, the government that Congress is considering is what kind of aid can they give these communities to take care of this incredible supply of abandoned housing as a result of foreclosures. And it represents our next, you know, what we used to call an urban problem, our suburban problem. That's an interesting point. Nick, well, we've almost stopped talking about the government's role in all of this. I mean, it was almost like we've thrown our hands up. They took so long uh, to acknowledge there was a problem, and then they took so long to figure out uh, potential uh, remedies for the problem. Is, is there even a role left for government now in this housing crisis? Well, it's getting late. I mean, you can contrast the role of the government in the housing market with the role of the Fed in the broader economy. Right, right. I mean, the Fed has been very aggressive, very nimble, sometimes subject to criticism. The government role to date has been recommending voluntary modifications, which seems to affect very few people. And even now, as they debate some possible legislation, it gets later and later. This whole market is spiraling in a bad way, and there's going to be a limit to, to what extent government can change that. All right. Gentlemen, always a great conversation with you. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicholas.